three years ago, my teaching partner, um, his name was Dana, came to me and said that he's got kids that know a lot about geometry, but are failing the class because they don't do their homework. He said the one phrase I really remember him saying was, the system is broken and we got to fix it. So we went on a journey. He took a class on his own about blended learning, and he brought that back to our, us the next school year, and we started putting it together. Also with that is our school had just gone one-to-one -one that same year, and we were given a uh, learning management system called Schoology, and I was one of the pioneers on that one. They kind of slated me to go to the workshops on Schoology and all that, and I learned how to use it. And so with that combined, him and I working together, we, we also partnered up with another teacher, and we started trying to find a way to make this work. And it kind of developed into a process where it, I would say it's blended. You know, the kids have their pace. They have a choice of what they want to cover, how they want to operate the class. They can listen to me. I do my, my short, it, my lectures did change from like a full blown 60 minute, you know, 40 minute to very short, um, go over the examples, answer questions kind of thing. And it's turned into kids are handling things on their own. But at the same time, I'm still presenting if they need me. But I, I do see a lot of the soft skills for the, you know, they say the 21st century skills. I see a lot of that going on. I mean, they're like, hey, I need to work on this assignment because I, you know, I missed this or whatever. But we had to create, number one, you had to go through all the, the essentials and figure out what was essential. That was, once we figured that out, that wasn't too bad. And then what we really did to get this going is we wrote a final. What do we want our kids to know based off our essentials at the end of the school year? And then we started writing questions to get them to that final and just kept working that backwards design, kept going back, kept going back. Now we have, um, I think, uh, last count, we've got in Schoology just for geometry, we create over 16,000 items for the kids to work through. That's questions, tests, practice tests, projects, videos. The cool thing about it is now I am not the one directing them how they have to learn. They are going, hey, I need to do this. We're seeing a lot more investment. We're seeing these kids, you know, figuring out how to manage their time a lot better. Now, some are not very good at it, and I have to kick them in the, in the tail a little bit. And some are way ahead of me. They, they've already got everything figured out. That was a challenge, too, is to create what are we going to do for those kids who finish early who need to be extended. And we've, we, I think we've done that successfully. We need to do more. But that's, you know, it's one of those when the idea comes, we start writing it and putting it together now. And I've been asked if I, could, if I had to go back to a traditional classroom, could I do it? No, I couldn't do it. And when it comes to my work with Grantwood and stuff, most of what we learned was self-taught. We tried it, didn't work, tried something else, it worked. Oh, okay, so went on that string. I got thrown into the Grantwood training at second year, and I didn't know a whole lot of uh, the terminology. That's my thing, I mean. I, I could not sit there and give you all the perfect terms of blended. I, I, that's not in my vocabulary, but can I make it work successfully? Yes. Um, we have, we've got the opportunity to teach a, a a class in geometry we call it daily it's for the lower level learners kids who struggle they have more than one thing against them whether it's learning disabilities whether it's you know home life whatever we we've taken that class last year's class they made over two years of growth in one year this year's group looks like we got about a year and a half maybe just under that i think it's just difference in kids too between them but they're still making more in a year they're catching up yeah. So being how in the blended model really helps them out because they can move around. You know, they do go sequentially. Those kids will. That's just, oh, I finished the first one, I'm going to go to the second one. But these guys, if they mess up, they can always go back. And I think the freedom of knowing, well, I screw up the first one. I can go back after I do some work that Mr. Oberg makes me do. It's not just a free ticket to retake. You'll see the geometry look at, it starts in lesson zero and then goes lesson one, two, three. I don't do chapter one, section three. So a kid, 
say I taught lesson two. Maybe a kid understood lesson two, so he just took the test. There's a test that goes just with each lesson. That was one thing that really helped us out is we no longer have the chapter test. You know, you taught chapter one, now you have chapter one test. Say chapter one's got eight sections. We'll have eight small tests. So a kid says, hey, I got this. I'm going to take, take the test. Now, they can take a test. And if they pass it, great, move on. If they don't, now they have to work through the process, which they know the process, and they really don't want to have to work that if they don't have to. But I have some kids that will do every step of everything before they ever take the test. And then those kids, their first attempt is always fairly high. They do a great job. And it's just a matter of they get the choice. I have a hard time telling a kid that he failed because he didn't do the homework, but he got, he aced the test. I just, I can't, there's nothing in my moral fiber that can do that. The thing is, if, if I'm going to operate with that, the other part, that I, part of the journey too, I should have mentioned is our principal challenged the whole school to see if they were, they could make it work to just go 0% on a homework. I mean, that was our challenge. <laughs> um, my teaching partner and I, we kind of looked at each other and like, you want to do it? Sure. You want to do it? Sure. Let's do it. That piece really kind of lit the fire too. We're like, Hey, let's just do it. The, we have all these practice tests that count for nothing, but it, those things push the kids to know their material. And what we found by breaking it up too, but the short test instead of a long test is we had to ask tougher questions and more of them. You know, you talk about higher level questions. Holy cow. Even our daily kids, our, our lower level geometry kids, they get the same tests. So that is the cool part is they are, they're doing just the same stuff. Last year in mid October, I had to go to a conference and I set up the videos cause you know, my sub wasn't a math teacher, set up the videos. I actually had more material than I needed when I was gone, just in case they went farther than I needed. Well, when I came back from that conference, they were still working on the stuff that was assigned and, you know, talking to me and doing all the stuff. And all I turned around and 20 minutes to go, I was going to start my next lecture. They're already working on the next lesson. And everybody was, I was like, okay, that's, that's cool. Well, I just started making more videos and just kept going. I really didn't present the rest of the school year last year, but I also found by me doing the videos and having them there that there were still a small population, very small in each class that still wanted to hear me say those words. So that's why this year I still have all the videos, but I'm still presenting because I have those faithful seven or eight kids in each class that I got to hear this. I've had one young lady who doesn't always listen to me, but she's working, sit intently watching every move I made, and I got done with the lesson, and then she came to me and says, okay, on the test, I missed this, I missed this because of this, and I kept missing this because, I mean, she, the only reason she was listening to the, the lesson was there's one little piece she knew she wasn't getting right. She heard me talk about it and was, oh, yeah, I got it. She went and her second attempt. I really want to see what they're thinking. I want to hear what they're thinking, not just show me on a piece of paper or that you turned into me two weeks ago. I want to hear it now. I want you to explain it to me. And I think that personal piece is, is one that just totally pushes this thing to the point where it's successful. Too many teachers are used to, well, I sign you homework, you hand me homework, our conversation is over a piece of paper. Um, sorry, that does not get kids to be interested in math or any subject. At the beginning of the class, you'll see um, some kids sitting down, some kids standing around mulling around. And I will come in after the bell rings for tardy. I'll do attendance right away. So not much is going on yet. Some kids are opening their Chromebooks. Some kids are getting their textbooks out or whatever. If I have any announcements like, hey, uh, this is coming up, you know, any just public service announcements, I make those and say, all right, let's go to work. And the kids that are mulling around will move to the library or an empty classroom that's right next to me. And they're going to go work on their geometry on their own. They don't need me. And then if it's a lesson day, we'll say it is, I will have the notes. I project them through um, a, a 
a short throw projector and I use a notebook software to present them. So I'll have that already ready to go. Kids, I don't even, I have a folder with um, all the notes packets so they can go and grab them before I start. And I'll just start and present my lesson, which again, it's not very long anymore. I present the examples, answer a couple questions, walk around, make sure those kids who are listening understand it, and we're done. Okay, so the lesson's done. Then it's like I get mobbed. All the kids that were waiting during the lesson, now it's go time. They need this test turned on. They need me to undo this. They need me. It's just, I feel like a pinball, just bouncing from subject to subject to kid to kid to kid to kid. And that's the rest of the class is me just bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. I have kids like, they're all of a sudden to learn a little patience because there's one of me and there's 30 of them. The, the challenge is, is to get, because they can go anywhere they want. I, I could be something at the beginning of the semester to the end of the semester and anywhere in between between kids. So I had to know my content extremely well. Because a lot of times in traditional models, you teach this lesson and you're focused on that. And that's okay. So when the kids ask questions, you're ready for it. Well, now I don't have that. It's you got to know all your stuff. Have you done 38? Is it easy? It was a kind of like we'll get mixed up a lot of like huh? so it's easy, but it's easy. 38? No, but isn't there like you have to do like a portion of it? Yeah, like a sector section. Or like a sector circle and circle. Yeah, you have it's kind of confusing that I'll get mixed up. Yeah, moving at your own pace, I mean, has probably been the biggest difference because with a lot of other teachers, it's always been very set. There was a different lesson you had to get done each day versus, hey, if you're struggling with this one a little bit, we can take a little extra time on it. Or if you get through this one, you can get through another one that day. It's just been a lot easier to work at your own pace. I feel like I get the help that I need when I'm struggling with something. And... Um, I always have had a tougher time grasping math concepts. And so then when I do need help, I feel like I can spend the couple extra days that I need on it and I can go to him to ask for help because he's not standing at the front of the class like giving us a lesson the whole time. I've never been good at math. Like I've always really struggled with it. And I think giving me my own space to like work on things for extra time or whatever instead of having to raise your hand and be like, hey, can you come answer this for me, um, has been really helpful with understanding math. I think generally it's a better relationship than most teachers because it's more working with him rather than him telling you what to do and giving you the order that you need to do things in and then like just kind of stepping back and like talking at you rather than with you. If you get behind, you will get really behind. <laughs> um, there's times where I've spent several weeks on one course and gotten so far behind that I had to be an advisory to catch up. And that's just, I think that's the most difficult part of all of it is if you get behind, you get really behind. Things like every lesson has a number on it and he tells us, you know, like, oh, if you need to leave one lesson behind and just work on other things and then go back to it. But I feel like I struggle with that. Like I don't want to leave anything behind. So then sometimes I get like stuck in my own rut, like trying to get that finished. I'd have more time to work on stuff, and that when I'm ahead, he can still help me with that. Versus Degator will like show you like 20 different methods if that's how much it takes to like understand it. Mm -hmm. So that's how it's different for me. Like it's more making sure you understand it than just showing you it. And you get to like work ahead too. So because like the videos are on Schoology rather than in Algebra Two, I just have to sit and listen to it, even if I already understand. Absolutely, I think I definitely would have failed last semester if he hadn't set it up the way he does with like the videos when we're gone and stuff. Like for Algebra Two, if you don't do your homework, you just get graded before like you get like a zero. But I kind of like it sometimes just to not do the homework, and because I've already understand it a lot, like, it's like super easy. I can just like take the test and. It's so good, and I can just keep going. So if you could have math like this the rest of your high school career. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'd jump on it. I should tell you this, too. I just got done with a student teacher. He came in, and he's never seen this, never knew this existed. 
And the first couple of days he was kind of like, okay, what's going on? And then I just kind of threw him into it and say, they're yours. And after that, he says, okay, I get it. He felt very cheated that he never was trained on this stuff. Okay. Because this, he says, this is awesome. And, you know, for a young, young man to sit there and go, listen, I want to do this the rest of my life. You know, that was pretty cool. What I've learned about the human spirit too is if you have hope, you can get anything done. If you have no hope, I'll move on to something else. And when I say I have some kids that haven't taken tests and haven't kept up with my lectures, I'll mark those tests missing. But they know all I got to do is do them and I take the missing off. And it's, it's not a penalty. It's just there. Well, when some teacher's policies put – a kid to where they have no hope, why do they keep trying then? You know, why would I keep going? All because you said I need, it's good for me. The big thing is, is if you can give a kid hope, you can get a lot. You can get anything out of them. And I try to create that idea that there's always hope. Now, you've got to be the one to do it. And I'll sit here and talk to you and answer your questions, but you've got to be the one to work with the information. The other thing, too, is someone said, well, I, they interact with the computer all the time. I, and they said, well, when do you see their work? You know, I see more homework. I see more work done now than I've ever seen before when I was all paper. You know, these kids will bring a whiteboard, a small whiteboard up to me with all their work and say, okay, this is all my work. Why did I miss this question? And we can look through it and go, oh, hey, you missed something right here. Um, they'll bring a, a notebook up. The best one is I've got the, these TI-84 calculators, and they'll bring it up, and we'll go through their history and go, hey, look, you forgot a negative, you know, something like that. But I see more now, and I have way more work done than I did before because they still have hope. <laughs> they're going to do it. And they're also learning how to approach somebody when they've messed up or they need help, and they're also learning how to resource Someone say they could cheat. Well, they can. If I get wind of it, I just take and throw that test out and they got to redo it. And it only takes one kid. I'm going to do it to one. And the rest of them go, ooh, I shouldn't do that. But them self-managing themselves. We want them to be adults. We want them to leave our classroom ready for adulthood in whatever way we can do that. And by making them turn in homework at a certain date, making them do all the traditional things we've done, well, we're in charge of all that. They're not. Let's, let's let them manage that. Now, I do hold them. There's deadlines. I would feel that I'm being very successful doing this. But it took me, two other teachers, and it took three to years to even get it built. You know, it was not an overnight thing. And I, and I think that's one that people have to, you know, look at. Get one lesson done and get it solid. <laughs> and, and after you got one lesson, okay, well, see what the next one you can get done. We, our PLC time, our you know professional learning time for two years was strictly writing questions. That's all we did is we looked at, we were a lesson ahead of the kids. What do we want to get out of this one? How does it fit our uh, essentials out of the core? What, I mean, what do we got to get out of this? And we went anywhere to get questions. We went to, we got on the ACT free prep went to the SAT free prep. We went and looked at iReady and their stuff and stole some questions out of there. We went to our textbook, always went to our textbook and stole questions out of that. So like we were taking an iReady test here last week and one of my, my kids turned and goes, hey, look at this. Almost identical question. Just it was a little different twist, but she's like, I know how to do this one, you know, because she just got done doing it. In, a, in our actual class. So, I mean, we tried to make sure it fit the four questions, you know, like, is it got endurance? Is it got leverage? You know, all that stuff out of the PLC model. So, you know, there's been a lot to it. First of all, I mean, the one that we're dealing with right now is homework doesn't matter. It's practice. It, and I, and when it holds down a grade or, or raises a grade when a kid doesn't know anything, but they did all their homework. 
I think we need, we as an education society need to sit there and rethink that one. I did a three-year study here last week, um, putting my, I teach a trig and pre-cal course, just taking all my test data over three years. And we've done different policies regarding homework and retakes and stuff. And what's funny is the three-year average, we took homework totally out of the grade this year. It's, it didn't change the It didn't change anything. Yeah, I'm still averaging the same thing that I did when I had homework in. I like really watching kids own their own information, own their grade. Cause they, they, you know, I don't have a whole lot of parents talk to me over, you know, like, Hey, why is my kid doing this? Why don't I don't have that? Cause it's all right in front of them. They, I mean, the kids are like, yeah, see, I got this one, right. I got that one, right. You know, it's pretty obvious why the grade is what it is. And since I have an LMS that will grade stuff for me, it's in, instantaneous. So my grade book's always up to date. I never have the kid, parents like, well, when are you going to get that in? That's already done. The Schoology's nice. I, I can't complain. So, I mean, I know there's others out there that would do the same thing. You just have to take the time to do it. More parents, you know, they're happy their kids passing geometry. They're happy. I and mean, we also did this in a, a algebra two, like it's an essential algebra two course for a lower level learners. We've done it. When we have kids passing, taking algebra two, the essentials of it, and they're passing. Our algebra two scores went up on Iowa assessments last year. I wonder why. Kids who now normally never answer those questions correctly are, or at least have been exposed to this stuff. So without the blended, we probably couldn't do that. Go back and refine some questions. We're finding some holes, like kids aren't being able to answer some questions successfully as often. So we're actually scaffolding it down to a lower level, finding some questions or designing some that will lead them to that specific skill that we're having trouble with. Um, we've identified a couple. I've already taken care of those, uh, some of them, but not all of them yet. So that's the next thing. And I'm now headed to blending my trigonometry course. That's next year. So a bunch more videos. So that's my goal next year, you know, and just all the stuff that goes with that. Um, getting lots of ways for the kids to prepare, getting multiple, multiple, multiple versions of the tests. So if a kid isn't ready to take the test, well, he doesn't get the same version everybody else did, but it's the same content. We have eight different geometries this year. Our sophomore class is huge. And I have kids in another section say, oh, there's my geometry teacher, because they just use the videos. I mean, we linked all of our courses. So all the kids get the exact same stuff. There's no, it's my teacher did this, or allows, me. no, it's all the same. And the reason they say that is, well, I'm the one who made the videos, <laughs> you know? So they're all using them or have the ability to use them. So, you know, just the, the little, yeah, my teacher's out there talking to people but he's the one doing a video so that's what i learned from i don't want to go back to the traditional model that's why i'm trying to get my trig blended when i walk out of the door i know my kids learn something i can see it because i've talked to them you know that personal piece you know i'm not just a dummy up the board like charlie brown's teacher going want 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 all the dang time i'm in with the kids you know our teenagers want, you hear the term, well, I want my teacher to be real. Well, what the heck's that mean? Well, um, I, yes, I am real. You can touch me, pinch me, whatever, you know. But I think to them is they want to know that I really am interested in what they're thinking. And I'm willing to listen to them. And then they are willing to listen to me. And getting ready for my presentation up at Grantwood, um, my instructional coach came in. And she timed me in my um my blended course and she timed me in my trig course, which was a traditional one. And the, she was timing how much student interaction time I had. And she did this for like two weeks just to get an average and stuff. And I think it was over, it was over double the time in my blended class. My, it was almost, it was three times more in student interaction time. You know, you're look we got 80 minute blocks, 40 minutes of interaction, um, 60 minutes of interaction compared to 20, you know, <laughs> it's pretty different.